welcome back to the show. Welcome to Smoking Aloud. My guest is my very best friend, uh, and he is also the creator and director of Evil Clown Productions, seen here on YouTube. I will post the link below on the screen. Dave, nice to see you. Cool? Howdy. Cool to have you. Um, pleasure to be here. And, um... I know you're working on some projects, um, and you came on because you uh, wanted to discuss some topical stuff. So I want to go ahead and let you have the floor and tell me what what's going on. All right. Uh, first things first, I'm going to mention my I started a new channel. I've been debating on whether or not I wanted to, but I'm trying to keep my evil clown stuff separate from some other normal stuff I do. And recently, I got into doing Rubik's cube again. I, this thing used to elude me a lot when I was a kid, and I never ever solved it. And recently on YouTube, I watched some videos and seen it, so I've been doing it for a while. I, uh, I forgot to bring my Rubik's Cube, but but uh, Silver Eagle here has let me borrow his Rubik's Cube, so let me get it closer to the camera so you guys can see this. This is just a little test thing I'm going to do real quick to show you that's just scrambled up randomly, you know, so that way you know. But uh, I'm just going to do a quick saw here, so it'll only take me about a minute and a half because I've gotten pretty quick right now. And of course, this is not a speed cube, so it's a little a little difficult to get very fast with it, but... Trying to break the record, folks, I think, uh... <laughs> what is it, nine seconds? Uh, actually it's down to 7.08 seconds. Oh my god. Yeah, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's like, the kind of time that you'd have to put into Cuban to be able to hit that kind of time, oh, yeah. you'd have to, you have to memorize all the algorithms, and, you know, it's just, it, it's insane what you'd have to do to... It would get it going, but I have started learning what, what's known as the Friedrichs method, which is one of the quicker methods that allows you to, what you do is you do the first two layers first, and then I uh, that's about all I've learned of the Friedrichs method is the first two layers first, and that's pretty much about it. And then once I get, let's see, as you can see, I've, oops, I've gotten the first two layers fully done now, and that's uh, all I've gotten on the uh, Friedrichs method up to this point. <laughs> Because the rest of it, there's tons of you know, tons of different algorithms to do for the. And how long is it? Uh, how long have you been practicing all this? I uh, bought my first Rubik's cube uh, back in December, and then I bought a second one in January, and then I bought the Rubik's Revenge 4x4 uh, back in January as well. Now you're explaining to me that before the break, right, that uh, during the break, that you you actually worked your last Rubik's cube to death. Yeah, I actually I, I actually worked my my very first Rubik's cube. The stickers are. About 50% worn off on it, and it's gotten itself to the point where the when I was taking it apart to clean it, the, the whole white centerpiece just snapped right off. So I had to, I was able to get it glued and get it back together so it looks good. It can still turn and everything, but as far as solving with it, I think it's solving the days are pretty much done because I, I can probably solve it, but after about two or three solves, it'll probably fall right apart again. The corners done, and there you go. <laughs> it's good work. I mean, I've run into a lot of people that they're amazed that I can even do it in under two minutes. I, don't, you know, I can't do it under two weeks. You know, <laughs> <All> right? <laughs> and so many people like they get mad, and frustrated, and I've talked to a couple people that they, they've, they've taken this Ruby stream and just chucked it and hit the wall and busted it and threw it away because they just, they get too aggravated. That's incredible. Now, oh, of course, uh, for in, and foremost, this is a cigar show, so we're going to go ahead and light up. Okay. I'm going to light my always faithful Garcia Vegas English Corona, and what do you got, Dave? I got a Philly Blunt, great, because I'm still a wussy, still new to the cigar thing, so I like we're, the little extra flavor. So. Oh, and if you want to watch me do it with my saws and everything, it's uh, Evil Cuber Clown on YouTube. Remember, we'll always blow out. Flame not touching. Make sure you work it all the way around. And then... Light. Enjoy. Now, I know some of you still working on the... Um, uh, on my pilot show, I was talking about retrohaling and that's always pretty cool but um, I think you'll find that you'll get much more flavor out of that and um, you'll you'll definitely
definitely sense a difference in the in the smoke in the light. Now, once I started lighting this, um, uh, according to the video uh, that I mentioned prior in, in the pilot, I've been getting my cigars have tasted a lot different, a lot better. So it's, it's better just to blow all that burnt tobacco out and not inhale in it because there's it's a difference between day and night. Folks. Yeah, well, it is. That's the first time I've tried doing that, just to lightly touch it like you're talking about, and then blow out first a few times before you do that first inhale. It does make a bit, a lot of difference in the lighting. Mm -hmm. You don't get as much of a kind of charness to the first, you know, puff or two, right. like you normally do. It really makes it taste a lot better that way. Now, Dave's also a former professional wrestler. He wrestled. Uh, what was your What was your ring name? My my ring name was Nightmare, and. My catchphrase was, you mess with me, I'll be your worst nightmare. That's where I kind of came up with it. Um, and I, uh, my two finishing moves were, my power move was I did the Death Valley Driver and called it the Nightmare Bomb. And my finishing move, I did the Texas Cloverleaf and called it the Sweet Dreams. Now, I think I have a picture somewhere around here. As soon as I find it, when I do, I'll, I'll show it to you and let you know what he, what he looked like. It was really pretty cool. And you've done some acting. Yeah, I've done some acting. I did three films and... Uh, Kind of local production, full feature length films out in Kansas before I moved out here. And uh, two of the three won awards at the Cannes Film Festival, which is the big Kansas film festival for the state. And uh, I've been, ever since then, I've been wanting to get back into it. I'm still really, even though I've done those movies, when I get in front of the camera, I'm still really shy in front of the camera. I'm just, I feel more comfortable behind the camera and doing the video editing and all that stuff. So that's why I haven't put up a whole lot on YouTube yet. Because it's like, it's just me. And then you know, I get my wife help me with the camera work and lighting a little bit, but still when I get in front of the camera, uh, it takes me a while to warm up to it. And any project you're working on right now? Right now I'm still working on, I finally got the, get ready to edit the test film for my uh, new short I'm going to do is called The Adventures of White and Blackbeard. And uh, essentially it's, I'm going to be doing a split screen while I'm playing both parts because I'm the only actor I got right now essentially. <laughs> and, uh, but I did a test and I'm going to, uh, probably upload the test film, I'm hoping, next week sometime.